Hey guys, today I'm going to take a good AM radio and make it great with a simple, easy, and cheap PVC loop antenna. Okay, this is a really simple project when all is said and done. There's only two things that kind of really matter to get one of these loops to tune up correctly. The first is that you get the coils of the loop evenly spaced. All the online calculators assume some sort of a spacing or let you put one in, but they all assume that it's consistent. So when you're drilling the holes for the wires to go through in the frame, you definitely want to do something to make sure that they come out pretty close to the same. For me, it's going to be pretty easy because the sliding drill press vise is going to let me just count cranks and they'll all be spot on. But if you don't have a vise like this, not to worry, you can use a drill bit as a spacer. You got one for the holes that you're drilling and one for the spacing to the next hole. And uh, if those happen to be the same, you're just going to need two of the same drill bit. My loop has 11 turns of wire around the perimeter, so I'm actually starting in the center of each one of these pieces. That lets me use the seam in the PVC to line up the drill press so that all of four of the corners come out the same. I just do the center and then five each way. With my ends all drilled out, I can move on to cutting this piece of PVC and using this X fitting to make the center frame. I'm supposed to have 24 inch sides on my loop, which means I really need to have 34 inch diagonals. So I should need four 17 inch pieces, right? Well, the thing is, I've got a little bit of uh, space here, about three quarters of an inch or so beyond the end of the pipe to where the holes are in this piece. And I've got the same thing in this center piece here. I've, I've got about three quarters of an inch of space from the true center of this to as far in as the pipe is gonna go. I need to subtract that from both ends and actually cut my pieces to be 15 and a half inches long. Nothing special about the glue up of this thing, except that you do, when it's all said and done, need to make sure that these end caps are all exactly perpendicular uh, to your frame so that the loop will run around evenly. It, to do that, I glue the sticks into here first because then I can use this handle kind of as leverage to line things up when I glue them all into the X. It only takes a couple of minutes for that PVC cement to set to the point where you can move on to building the X frame. The important part of this step is that all of these end pieces are parallel to one another when the whole thing is assembled. You don't want the wires tweaking off to one side or the other as they go from one arm to another. And the way I like to accomplish that is to get a spacer block that is roughly the same height as this X piece is set up on end. That lets me take the arm and lay it flat out here and just slide the X straight on. By doing this, what I'm really doing is referencing the flat side of the end piece with the flat face of the X, both against the bench surface. With two of these things in here now, my alignment philosophy doesn't work anymore because I don't have a spacer block this tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap places. I'm going to bring the spacer block over here and put that underneath the X, and then I'm going to use the flat face of this piece to make my final alignment. Hey, there you have it. One X cross frame. And if we did our math right, sure enough, comes out 24 inches center to center on these corner pieces. I'm going to give this an hour, maybe two, probably just go eat some dinner and wait for it to get dark. 
before I string up this wire. Speaking of wire, you can use almost anything for a loop antenna. Uh, what I have here is actually some really small 24 gauge speaker wire that uh, comes in a stereo pair. I just split it apart so I only have one strand. And this is nice because it's it's thin, it's small, but it's and it's real flexible, um, but it is insulated. So I don't really have to worry too much about if the uh, strands of my loop happen to lean up against something and touch each other, they're not going to short out and ruin the inductance of my loop. I wish I had some good advice for you for winding the wire around these loops, uh, but I don't. It's a tedious process. Uh, the only way around that is to build a frame that instead of being drilled through on the ends just has slots, so you can literally just wind it around. That, that actually is far easier. Um, but if you're going to do it this way, I would suggest that you find the center of your wire and put it through the middle hole on pick a leg and start in the middle so that you don't have to pull all of the wire through every hole. You only have to pull half of it <laughs> through every hole. Um, the other thing is to calculate the length of wire you're going to need and don't use a whole lot more than that. Um, theoretically, I need 88 feet of wire for this loop. I have 100 feet. I started in the middle, so it's not going to be not going to be too bad. But if you get a 250 foot spool of magnet wire or something like that, don't unwind the whole thing. Okay, with the loop all wired up, there's only one more component to this thing, and that is one of these guys. And this is a 10 to 360 Pico Farad variable capacitor. It sounds like an exotic bugger that's going to cost you a fortune, but the reality is that there's a couple of these in every analog radio and TV set ever made, so they're pretty easy to scrounge. As you might imagine, I've got two loose ends for my loop going around here, and this is as simple as connecting one wire to the body, which is one terminal on this capacitor, and the other to uh, one of these four legs, which is the other. There's no polarity, so however you can get it to mount that looks good to you, that's right. When in doubt, use hot glue to attach anything to everything else. In this case, it actually is going to work out especially well because the glue will melt into the PVC just a little bit. One side of the loop is soldered on, the other side will eventually be attached with a screw, uh, once I get a screw the right size. For now, tape it is. Okay, the weather's not perfect for demonstrating long range AM propagation tonight. In fact, it's uh, snowing like mad right here, which has this annoying tendency to absorb radio waves left and right. Uh, but I think I can still get the point across here by uh, showing you what happens to the signal of what I would call an intermediate distance station. Uh, what you're seeing on the GoPro there in the corner now is the signal strength and tuning for a station that is out in Philadelphia. Now that's probably almost almost 400 miles away from where we are here at the house. You see that we've only got three or four bars there on the signal meter with things as is. And if I turn up the volume a little bit, you can hear that that's, that's pretty crackly, it's pretty staticky, it's not uh, something you'd want to listen to regularly. Well, let's go ahead and add the loop to the mix and see what happens. And the first step is to point the loop in approximately the direction of the station. You can get this all fine-tuned once you have it all set up, but the basic plot is that you have the plane of the antenna pointing in the direction of the station. The next thing we have to do is couple the radio with the loop. The easiest way to do that is just set it in the middle. The last important step is to adjust this variable capacitor to actually tune the loop to the station that we're trying to receive. Right now I have maximum capacitance, which means the lowest end of the band. But as I start to reduce the capacitance on here, at some point, we will start to see a notable spike in the signal. Right about there seems to be it. We've got almost full signal on this station right now. And sure enough, if I turn up the volume. While free shipping and even free batteries for life. For free information, call now. one 800 Definitely listenable. So that's it. There's not a whole lot to building or using one of these things. And the reality is we're talking about AM radio here. Even with full signal strength, with stations that are a long way away, you're going to hear clicks, pops, dropouts. You're going to miss a word now and then. 
There's a reason that we replaced this with FM radio and then ultimately the internet, but that doesn't mean that it's not loads of fun. In the right conditions, you can hear stations that are 2,500, 5,000 miles away with just a simple loop like this. So if you've got an old AM radio sitting around, why not build one, see what the heck's out there. As always, questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. While you're there, think about hitting that subscribe button. And above all, stay safe, YouTube.